right now, today, AI is threatening our livelihood. And by our, I mean all of us, actors, writers, producers, radiologists, cashiers, designers, coders, truck drivers, and eventually everyone else. The change we've seen in the last 25 years will be a drop in the ocean compared to what we'll see in the next five to maybe 10. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get back to here right now, today. AI is threatening to take a lot of work away from a lot of us. Back in October of 2020, the World Economic Forum said that by 2025, AI would take away 85 million jobs globally. And by the way, we're more than halfway to 2025. They also said that AI would generate over 97 million jobs globally in areas like digital marketing, machine learning, big data, and information security. But here's the thing, the jobs it's taking away are not the same jobs it's creating. It's not creating jobs for creatives, it's taking those away. Good luck quitting your acting job and waltzing right into a job in machine learning. And for a prime example of how this is happening, look no further than our own industry and the current SAG-AFTRA and Writers Guild of America strikes against the AMPTP, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Now that alliance includes the major movie studios as well as the major streaming services and the big television producers as well. Now, the AMPTP wants to use generative AI services like ChatGPT to, make no mistake about it, replace writers altogether. They want to be able to scan background actors, pay them a half day's wages, less than a hundred bucks by the way, and be able to use those scans however they like, for as long as they like, in whatever they like, with no additional compensation to or consent by the actors with no control over their own images. Right now, the technology exists for the studios to create entire seasons of programming that were never shot back in the day. AI can write the script, digitally recreate the actors, have them say whatever they want in the actor's own voices, and output the shows with virtually no creative professionals involved whatsoever. And because the expired contracts when they were negotiated, the unions couldn't even see such a scenario. Hell, these contracts were negotiated three to five years ago and ChatGPT didn't exist last year. And because the current now expired contracts had no way of seeing that coming, the studios intend to use AI for whatever wish they so choose. If the studios have it their way, they will completely eliminate the artists from the art. If the corporations have their their way, they will completely eliminate the workers from the work. And right now, today, in 2023, the artists have leverage that we will never ever have again. If we don't stand strong now, union, non-union, doesn't matter. If we don't stand up to the encroachment that AI is making right now, we are never going to have this chance again. We are literally fighting for the soul of our livelihoods right now. And this is happening in so many fields. In another few years, self-driving car technology will eliminate taxi drivers, rideshare drivers, bus drivers, and maybe eventually boat captains and pilots. AI can already read x-rays and other medical images more reliably on average than human radiologists. We are at a unique point in time in history where we can right now see in the windshield the elimination of the vast majority of all work, which is great on the surface for a few days, except how do we then exchange value with each other? How do we generate income for ourselves and put food on the table for our families? How do we make a living doing what we love? How do we make a living at all. And if the vast majority of people are out of work, then who buys the products and services made by the machines? I'm not sure the AMPTP or Google or Apple or Amazon or Microsoft or Oracle or anybody has that one figured out yet. And that is the one thought that gives me hope. If they, the corporations and studios developing AI to put us all out of work, if they in fact do that, then there's no one left 
to feed the machine. There will be no one streaming the content because no one will be able to afford food, much less Netflix. There'll be nobody riding the bus because nobody will be able to afford to ride. What the corporations and the studios and the tech companies haven't figured out yet is they need us. And by us, I mean they need a healthy economy where the vast majority of people work and exchange value and depend on each other. But if the doomsayers are right and there is mass pandemic unemployment, then the have-nots, far outnumbering the haves, will rise up and a full-scale dystopia will erupt. And so the current strikes in Hollywood are not just about actors and writers. They're about what it means to work, what work means to us as individuals and a society. They're about the basic human rights to work, to create, and to serve each other. Work gives us purpose and meaning. It gives us a way to contribute to society and to the people we serve. It gives us pride. It gives us something to get up for in the morning. It gives us something to call ourselves. What's the first thing you ask a stranger when you meet them? What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a, a welder, I'm a teacher, a server, a, a, a butcher, a baker, a TV show maker. What we do is part of our identity. That's the way the world used to be. We knew at one time that good employees make good customers. If people make good money, then they spend and save and invest good money in products and services. But then came the 60s and 70s and Milton Friedman and trickle-down economics, and we transferred all the risk from the corporations to the employees. And in the process, we decimated loyalty on both sides. Corporations now fire thousands at will, not because they're fighting to survive, but because they may not make as much profit as their projections said they would. Employees have learned the hard way. Gen Z now prides themselves on job hopping and freelancing because they grew up in a world where employees are completely expendable. But workers are ultimately customers. The same writers and actors who are drawing a line in the sand right now against AI are the same people who are customers of Netflix and Disney Plus and Discovery Plus and Max and Apple TV Plus and Prime Video and all the rest. I believe that people don't want to see art created solely by a machine. They want to see art created by humans with a soul. No matter how good the production, we want to know that there's a human behind that creative work who thinks and feels and worries and gets hurt and bleeds and loves just like we do. You cannot separate good work from the worker. Art from humanity. Good work and good art is by definition created by humans. Otherwise, it's all just ones and zeros. For more information on the VO Freedom Master Plan, the VO Pro community, or to get my Move, Touch, Inspire newsletter for voice actors every Thursday, click those links in the description or show notes below. Thank you so much for the conversations here on the channel, in VO Pro, in the VO community at large, Thank you for your support, and we will see you back here again next week.